Hey, this is Vo from Vocal Pockets, and I'm here to teach you how to use Groove Builders to make music that's more authentic to you, find the right groove and bounce for your beats, and start developing your own signature groove. This video consists of two parts. The first part will show you how to add and save Groove Builders in Studio One. The second part will show you how to apply Groove Builders. Let's start with adding and saving Groove Builders. Your download includes the MIDI version of Groove Builders. Locate that folder within the browser panel on the right. By doing so, you can easily see the Groove Builder files and play before and after examples that give you a sense of the balance that the particular Groove Builder can add. When you look at Groove Builders, you'll see a naming convention. Here's what everything means. First, you'll see a number. Groove Builders are numbered from one to an N number, with Groove Builder 1 having the most significant timing impact when applied at 100%. In other words, Groove Builder 1 is going to have more swing and will move notes more than Groove Builder 15, for example, when applied at 100%. Each numbered Groove Builder has a different VD4H profile or velocity design for hi-hats. VD4H is a feature of Groove Builders that is designed to give your hi-hats more bounce, though you can try using this feature on other elements of your tracks like conga patterns, for example, to get some inspiring results. Next in the naming convention, V-Pocket stands for Vocal Pockets. The next letters represent the genre that inspired the Groove Builder. Then you'll see the actual Groove Builder name. And then finally, you have the timing settings. For many styles of music, 16th note quantization will be sufficient. If you have more than 16 hits of a particular instrument in a measure, you can use a more granular timing setting like 132. If you only have seven hits of a particular instrument, you can either use 1 8th or 16th note grid quantization. In short, if you choose 1 16th, all your notes are moved to the nearest 16th note. If you choose 1 8th, all your notes are moved to the nearest eighth note. Finally, with respect to the timing settings, if you see a T in front of a timing setting, it means that the Groove Builder is designed for triplet based feelings. I already have a Groove Builder added to Studio One and it's easy to add more. You could drag and drop them one by one onto an existing track, or you can select multiple and add them all at once. When you add them to a new track, Studio at One may add a CH1 to the end of the name. Let's remove that by deleting the CH1. Before clicking enter, hold down Shift so that the MIDI file name also updates at the same time. Then click on the Q at the top of the page. Then towards the left, select Groove. Next, drag and drop the Groove Builder into the Grid section. Go over towards the right under the A and click the plus button that says store preset. Now all we need to do is click OK and the Groove Builder is saved in Studio One so you can use it in future projects. You only need to do this process once for each Groove Builder that you add. If you have multiple Groove Builders stored, you can organize them into a folder within Studio One. To do so, click on the drop down menu Right click on the Groove and select Open in Finder if you are on a Mac. If you're on a Windows, it may say Open in Explorer or something similar. Then you can create a folder here, which I've already done, and drag and drop the Groove Builder into that folder. Then come back to the browser within Studio One, click on Home, go down to the bottom where it says Reindex Presets, click on that. And then if you come back to the drop down, you'll see that all your Groove Builders are neatly stored within a folder for future use. Now let's transition to applying Groove Builders to find a groove that speaks to us and start feeling out what might be our signature groove. We have a standard drum beat in Studio One to which we will apply Groove Builders. Within your product download, you should see three MIDI drum files marked with quantized to the grid in parentheses. I've added those to my project. There's a MIDI file called Hi-Hat, which you should set up to trigger a hi-hat sound of your choice, a file called Kick, which you should use to trigger a kick sound of your choice, and a file called Snare, which you should use to trigger a snare sound of your choice. No matter whether you're using a drum kit or a sampler for your sounds, feel free to move the location of the notes up and down the piano roll to find a sound of your liking. So let's click on the hi-hat track to open up the piano roll and select Q at the bottom of the screen. 
Now we're gonna select a Groove Builder from the Quantize Panel dropdown. And I'll select the Groove Builder inspired by a funk record. And now we are ready to apply this to our track. Now here's how to think about applying Groove Builders. To use an analogy, if your beat is food, Groove Builders are seasoning, and without seasoning, food can be bland. When you apply seasoning to a dish, you start at zero and then slowly add seasoning to taste. In other words, you don't dump all the seasoning all at once and then try to pare it back. Use the same seasoning approach when applying crew builders. In the quantize panel, take the start time to zero and slowly blend in the amount to an amount that sounds good to you. After you find a timing amount that you like, you get to add one of my favorite features of Groove Builders, which is VD4H or Velocity Design for Hi-Hats. Apply the seasoning approach here. Click with your mouse and slowly increase the velocity in the quantize panel to an amount that sounds good to you. So I'll do that now. So here's where we started with the beat completely quantized on the grid. And here's where we got in a few seconds using Groove Builders. Now, we've only touched the hi-hats. Other than keeping the beat as is, there are four creative decisions we can make from here, and this is how you start developing your signature groove. The four creative decisions are as follows. One, uniformity, which means using the same groove builder at the same timing strength or start percentage as you do for the hi-hats. Subuniformity, which means applying the same groove builder to other elements of your tracks, but at a different timing percentage or start percentage. Mix, which means using a different groove builder for the other elements of your tracks. And then for submix. Submix means dividing a track into multiple parts and using a different groove builder for each part. For example, if I wanted to use submix on the hi hats, I could use one groove builder for the first eight hits and a different groove builder for the next eight hits. For this demo, I'll use mix for the kick and snare. I will apply a groove builder inspired by a pop record and apply that to each of these two elements. So I'm gonna reset the start time to zero, reset the velocity, and I'll play the track and click play. All right, so that sounds pretty good to me. Now, if I add a melody to this beat, I may decide to do mix or sub-uniformity to the melody. By choosing one of these creative techniques, you could really start crafting your own signature sound that will make your music more identifiable. The great thing about Groove Builders is that you're in control of which Groove Builder you use, which notes you apply it to, and how much you blend it in with your own recordings. One way to tell if a Groove Builder is making an impact other than using your ears is to do the Mary Had a Little Lamb test. Well, what's that? Play a track with the Groove Builder and repeat the line, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Then play the track without the Groove Builder, and if your enunciation of Mary Had a Little Lamb is different, you could tell that the Groove Builder is making an impact. And I'll do that here. I'll, I'll play the track and allow you to say Mary had a little lamb to yourself and then play the version that's quantized to the grid. Quantized version. If your enunciation was different, imagine how a vocalist can come up with a new hook or flow when you send them a beat with Groove Builders. I usually season my tracks with Groove Builders until I myself am able to come up with a flow. That way, if I send the beat to an artist and they say, this is cool, I'm trying to figure out what to do with it, I could pitch a flow that may lead to the next catchy 
hook or flow. And that way I'm adding much more value to the relationship and you could do the same when you use this tool. Something else to keep in mind is if you ever switch samples or add effects to your sounds, you can easily recalibrate the right groove by bringing the start percentage back to zero and increasing it to your liking based on the sounds that you may have modified. You can also use groove builders to vary the arrangement of your song. For example, you can use one groove builder for the verse and a different groove for the chorus or bridge. Thus far, we've applied groove builders to MIDI tracks. The great thing about them in Studio One is that you could apply the timing feature to audio. Where this comes in handy is if you have audio loops from a kit or you get stems from an engineer and the bounce isn't exactly how you envisioned, you can use Groove Builders to tweak the bounce to get something that you're looking for. It's easy to do this. I'll show you how the process works very quickly. So I'll come to my hi-hat tracks. I'll click bounce to new track. So here you see I have audio copy of the hi-hats, then trigger detect transients. And then when I click apply, you should see the notes shift. And of course you could vary the start percentage to your liking. Now let's say you're the type of producer that starts with melodies and samples first, whether it be a MIDI melody or a audio sample. Those samples and melodies have their own bounce to them and you can use Groove Builders to find the groove that's best suited for your samples and melodies. Here's how I do this. I draw 16 hi-hat notes, then apply the timing or start percentage like we discussed to find a pocket in the space that matches the melody or sample. Then you could take the timing or start percentage that you added for the hi-hats and use that on your other percussive instruments. Or as we discussed before, you could use sub-uniformity mix or submix. Here's an example of me doing so. I'm gonna mute the kick and the snare and just play the hi-hats with the sample and I'll select the Groove Builder. Bring the start percentage down to zero, and I'll play. So here's the beat if it was just quantized to the grid with the sample. And here's where we got in a few seconds by just using group builders. Finally, I'll share some additional creative fun. If you use a drum plugin that provides the ability to trigger different samples, depending on the velocity of a note, you can come up with some really fun results. Here's an example of me doing so in Battery 4. So as you can see there, as I increase VD4H or the velocity component of the Groove Builder, I got different rhythmic results. And you can use this technique for the chorus of your track, for the bridge, for the outro, or maybe even the main part. This technique also works well if you wanted to use pitch versions of a hi-hat. For example, if you have a primary hi-hat sound and want to transpose it a few semitones for certain hits of the hi-hat, you can really experiment with different feelings in that respect using Groove Builders. So I'll end this video with a challenge. For the next three beats you make, use Groove Builders and then create a separate version that's completely quantized without VD4H and see which version sounds more authentic to you as a producer and which is more of your sound. Feel free to tag us on Instagram at Vocal Pockets with any videos of you using Groove Builders. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that this video was helpful and if it was, please like and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day and hopefully that day is spent making music.